Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. Today's video, we're gonna finish off the transfer case rebuild. In this rebuild, I had an MP231 Jeep, an MP231 Chevy, and for the LS swap, I needed to mix both parts. Well, really the only thing I needed from the Jeep was the sensor and the slip yoke eliminator. However, for the rebuild, for the transfer case, we created a six gear planetary and also upgraded to the one and a quarter inch chain. It already had a one and a quarter inch chain. However, I was missing this sprocket right here, which we got so we could utilize the same drive shafts uh, configuration in the Jeep. Anyways, let's get this rebuild completed. Alrighty then, we can take this. There's our chain. I need to get this thing started kind of in the way, kind of in the way of my camera. Actually, maybe. Come on. Well, that went way easier than I thought. Way easier. Before we can assemble the case, we need to pull this bearing out and I'm going to use a blind hole puller to pull it out and insert a new bearing. Alright, we're set up. She's tight. Come on. And we're out. Same thing like in the last video when we installed the bearing is of course having a press will be better. But you can also make them go in easier too if you put them in the fridge or not fridge the freezer and freeze them but Gently tap, go all the way down till it's flush. I can probably just go a little bit more. To, and it looks like I'm good right there. Still the oil pump. I'm just checking the screen. And one thing you don't want to clean it with is brake cleaner. I had some throttle body clean inside the shop that I used just because it's a little less lethal. I find brake cleaners react to some plastics that make them really brittle. So I also put the O-ring on there. And this is the one I'm choosing to use. And there is an O-ring in there that we're going to pop out because that's the O-ring I put on the stem there. And then there's a seal right here. We're going to pull that seal out. Remember the way it went. New kit's got one. And it looks like it's brass. I'm just going to find the one driver. It fits across the face. Perfect. New seal's put in. This is a good time to put some grease on there. But make it slide into the housing better. Don't forget to put the spring back on. All right, this is where the fun is going to begin. So the tabs for your oil pump sit on the outside, but your screen fit on the inside. And the trickiest thing about this is, is um, one, getting it all together. Now I put the O-ring on, on here, but I think right now, gonna be better if I plop it in the hole and if you don't get a good seal in there with your stem unfortunately you're not done um... ah, see it's pushed in and I'm gonna get a camera to show you why that's important 
all right this is what i want to point out do you see on this one right here you see that lip if that lip is not flushed in with your oil pump you're not going to have a seal so basically the only thing your oil pump is going to be sucking up is any oil that's around this line that isn't being clogged by this tube that's why you got to make sure it's assembled it's kind of tricky when you go to put it on um before we put that front cover on we're gonna silicone it and we're also gonna put grease around here because that's where that seal is gonna sit all right put some assembly lube on that seal you gotta be careful now when we go to assemble it because you don't want to you don't want to pull that out same with this when you go to put the caulking on or silicone i should say caulking's like something you use in your house silicone this is the right stuff I'm gonna put a nice thin layer I'm gonna flatten it down with my finger before we assemble it make sure it cures before you put oil in it if you put oil in too soon well there's a good possibility you may contaminate it and we don't want that so I just wanna get this set up and then throw that front cover on the sooner we get this done it'll be easier if I just do that Engage a couple of bolts. So it can float itself down. I tried multiple attempts without putting that cone on the outside cover. And always had a problem with the oil pump tabs falling underneath the case. So I put the cover on and sometimes you get lucky with the alignment. And it's just going to go right on. These are the ones I need. Right here. Let's start putting those ones in. One by one. Alright, that's the part you want to be careful. The case is not quite 100% seated yet, but it will be. So I just want to gently start going around, sucking her down, because it sits on those alignment pins, right? Am I too short there? Why, why, why no grab? There we go. Now this is the part where after you go through all that trouble, if you're still flush in there, you're good. If you're not, you got to take it all apart. So in the slip yoke eliminator here, if you get a rebuild kit, it doesn't come with the seal. The seal doesn't leak, at least it wasn't. So you got to be careful. Gonna need to get a punch. You damage that seal, we're gonna have to try to find one. But it's got a snap ring inside. We're gonna pull that out, flip it around, tap that bearing out, put the other one in. You gotta be strong. You gotta have to have strong fingers, hey? Some I don't have. We're gonna go. Let's go like 12, 3. Flipper upside down. Yeah, we're almost out. We're almost out. out again gonna set the bearing in try to try to get her in as straight as possible I mean if you have access to a press it's a hundred times easier and I have one in the corner but 
Most people will not have a press, and for this job, I'm just gonna try to get the sucker in. There we go. And this bearing driver is basically the same size as the bearing itself. So as we go in and we come down to seat it, you're gonna see the snap ring groove. And that's what we want. Not quite there yet. And this thing here, I need to maybe go down one size. This is 2.83. Let's go 2.80. That's, I think that's gonna fit in there better. Yeah, it's still tight though. I mean, my bearing driver's stuck in there. Seat it now. Bearing driver stuck, not a problem. Go to the opposite side. Drop her out. Relook. Looks good to me. Now, of course, you know you know how much strength we had to use to uh, compress this. Now, this is the only time I'll say it. Where the snapping lock rings are, the snapping lock pliers come into play because the snap rings as you click it it'll lock never usually a big fan of them but today we are we would be but i don't have any snap ring over top of there we go throw this one on If anybody's done this job, knows the struggle and how much these things suck. Get in there. Okay. That side snapped in. That side snapped in. That's locked down. We gotta put our silicone on this one too. Remember going around the front there, be mindful of how much you use because once you seal her up, it may block that hole. So, I just want to run this around with my finger. Now that we're siliconed up, last thing, I'll throw some assembly grease on that surface and then carefully carefully get that down into place. Now, the bolts. Bolts we need to put some silicon on as well because the threads go right through so if you had no silicon on them you could have a leak point right right Let's go number number two setting See, number two is not that tight, so gives me an opportunity to snug her down by hand. You go retard tight, you gotta snap her off. Now, need to put silicon 
inside there because so that's going to help create a seal seal because otherwise fluid may leak out and then I'm going to put some assembly grease around there so we don't put it in dry we're just damaging the seal so we got our silicon in there very carefully slider in place as such now you're not want to use some blue loctite red loctite any kind of loctite you can my loctite is the weather after a few months she'll rust in take my impact That part's in. Insert the speed sensor. Only really a couple spots that you can rotate that to. 13 mil it is. Vehicle speed sensor installed. You got this rubber one, and this is actually just goes on the shaft there. And that, whoops, just get the camera in the angle. That's gonna be the seal for that. Throw some assembly grease on there. So we're not putting it in dry. Carefully. Carefully. We're not doing it right. It just was just being stubborn. Just being stubborn. Let's get our nut. Start by hand. Impactor on. There, she's on. Tight. Tight. I think that's it. I think she's assembled. Well, there you have it, everybody. The rebuild of the MP231 for the LS swap is completed. Once the silicone has cured, tomorrow I am going to put a little bit of oil in it. Not much, just a little bit of oil because we're still going to be putting it in, taking it out, putting it in, taking it out. That way, at least there's a little bit of oil. We can verify and make sure there's no leaks beforehand. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If this video helped you out, hit the subscribe button. Also, follow this build for the Jeep TJ LS swap that I'm doing. Anyways, you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later, and good luck.